So let me start with the definition of virtualization. First of all, why do we virtualize? We virtualize servers, we virtualize routers, we virtualize lands, we virtualize the reality. So what is the virtualization? I'm going to go with a simple uh, example here. Let's say that I have this server here. And on this server, I have some services. Let's say, for example, DNS, DHCP, or maybe Active Directory. Uh, directory service is working on this. Now, let's say that the server goes down for some reason or the connection to network, you know, is disconnected. So this server is going to be out of service. With that, all the services are going to be disrupted. So what should I do? I need to add an extra machine here. I buy an extra physical server and I install a redundant version of services on them and then I make sure that this is working just fine so in case one of the servers go down the other one is going to be there to work with that is a basic thing but when we think of that we say okay this server is a very strong and powerful piece of machine so why would we just run these services on them we can have multiple more services on them and the other thing is, all of these services are installed in one place. Let's say that there is a bug in DHCP, and that is going to hurt other services as well. DNS is going to, you know, malfunction. Active Directory service is not going to work just fine. So what should I do? I need to kind of isolate these services from each other. So isolation is one of the reasons that we go for your virtualization. What do I do? What I need to do is to go and create virtual machines. Let's say this is one virtual machine is going to run DNS only. The other virtual machine is going to run DHCP only. The other one is going to run Active Directory. Or maybe some of these virtual machines run two or more services. But let's say we are just uh, you know thinking about one instance of a service here. And I'm going to do the same thing on the second service. So now we have three virtual machines on each server. If one of the servers go down, services are still there on the other virtual machines on the other server. They are running just fine. There is no problem. If one of the virtual machines go down, the other services are not going to be affected. They are going to work just fine. So everything is there, isolated. And this means that isolation is one of the most important reasons that we have uh, virtualization here. The other reason is this. We can have multiple services on the same server without having a problem of, for example, interfering with each other. Which means that we can consolidate services here. So consolidation is another reason that we go for virtualization. Isolation and consolidation are the main reasons. Now let's go for another example. So we have this network and let's say that this uh, consists of multiple switches and because switches are transparent I'm not going to draw them. What I'm going to draw is this. I have multiple computers connected to this network and for some reason, I do not really want all the computers to be in the same segment. I just want to make sure that they are in different segments. They do not have anything to do with each other. If they want to communicate to each other, I can provide the means. But here, I do not really need to have them in just one segment. What should I do? What I really do is, instead of having this network here, I'm going to have virtual network how let's say that this is one network this is another network now some of the computers are connected to this network like these two some of the computers are connected to the other network like these two now i might have something like a router here which connects these two to each other but normally computer one cannot speak to computer two it can only speak to computer 3, 
but computer 2 can speak to computer 4 it cannot talk to computer 1 and 3 unless there is a router here which is going to you know uh, enable the communication between these two so what we have here is called VLAN right a virtual LAN so this is the second use of virtualization and again we have isolation we have isolated computer 1 and 3 from 2 and 4 we have consolidation we have all of them in just one real uh, LAN let's go now with another example this one was in layer 2 and I'm going to speak about something that is in layer 3 so again I have this router here for my network for my company and let's say that this is my company and I provide some services to different customers now I have only one router and I'm going to connect it to one customer's router here this customer's router is connected to its own network which means that now I can receive and send some routes from this customer router to my provider router here now let's say that I have another customer here and it wants services from my company what should I do should I add an extra router here or should I say this router can be virtualized and I can have multiple routers, multiple virtual routers, as a matter of fact, inside this one router. And I can connect it to here. Which means that the customer edge routers do not see a virtualized router. They see a complete router. But from my point of view, I have, as a matter of fact, this. This is one router. This is another router. This is what I see here, as a matter of fact. And this is going to have its own routing information base and control plane and everything. This is going to have its own routing information base and control plane and everything. So, as a matter of fact, this piece of hardware, which is expensive already and very powerful, can, inst can be instantiated into two virtual routers or even more than that and each one of these virtual routers is going to be connected to one of the customer edge routers on the customer side and again what i have here is this isolation of each customer to just one of these virtual routers also consolidations of multiple customers on just one router so isolation and consolidation are the two key facts in virtualization going back to my slides what I have as a matter of fact is a virtual router and virtual router is called a virtual router instance or VRI so VRFs are a way to separate these RIPs or routing information bases from each other even if they have overlapping IP addresses again go back to here let's say that this customer uses 10 0, 0, 0, slash 8 at this space. This other customer uses 10, 0, 0, 0, slash 8 at this space. What should I do to make sure that anything from this customer is routed back to this customer only, not to the other customer? By separating these routing information bases from each other. This means that even if they have overlapping IP addresses, doesn't matter I have some mechanisms to make sure that they are separate from each other and there is no problem you know routing back to them so we have solved the uh, problem of overlapping IP addresses with just using virtual routing and forwarding when we are talking about VRFs we are talking about layer 3 everything here happens in layer 3 but when we talk about VLANs, which is the LAN virtualization here, we are talking about layer 2. So, in different layers, we have different virtualization mechanisms, and these two are very important. You already know about VLAN. We are going to talk about VRFs in depth in later sessions.